Let's get into the word of God. We are in week five. Week five of a series that is called... Right, right, right. In a series which we're calling, Are You the One? Um, this series is dealing with relationships, uh, whether it be marriage or whether you are searching. I believe that one of the most critical skills you and I must develop is relationship building, right? Let me tell you something. Apart from finding Christ, one of the most important things you must find is the right partner in life. Let me tell you something. There's nothing that can destroy purpose like a wrong partner, like a wrong person. Trust me. While you are rabba rabba in here, <laughs> pick the wrong one. You will know Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. You will know Jesus. And that's why we felt it was really important to teach these things. Because look, we didn't have this. We didn't. I never had this. You know. And I've realized this is what is destroying because previous generation, and I thank God for the, the platform that they gave us, but the, the, the consensus and the thought was you teach this when you get married, right? But the problem is people are being damaged before they marry. So guess who's marrying? Damaged people are marrying damaged people. What do we have? Damaged marriages, damaged families, damaged children. And guess what? Damaged society. Right? And so while we can preach all kinds of things, if we don't teach relationships the right way, we'll have damaged people. Amen? But I pray that after this series, you have a better marriage. You have better relationships. You find joy in your relationship. If you don't want I'm talking to say Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word of God today. We're going to Genesis chapter 2, right? Uh, Genesis chapter 2. Please be upstanding for a few minutes. Please be upstanding for the reading of the word. Don't sit still early. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Are we there, guys? Please watch the time for me there. Okay. Let's read this together on the count of three one, two, three. Therefore, a man leaves his, yes, and embraces his wife. They become one. One more time on the count of three. One, two, three. Therefore, a man leaves his father and mother and embraces his wife. They become Aha, uh -huh, you know where we're going today, huh? Right, right. Today I'm preaching from a subject in my series, Are You the One? That I am calling Cutting Ties. Cutting Ties. Oh, oh, oh. You thought we were talking about weddings. No, 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 no. Let's first deal with Cutting Ties. Dealing with so... Yes, 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 yes. I want you to high five your neighbor before you sit down and tell him you need to cut some ties. Yes. Ah, cutting ties. If you can see on the stage, there's a whole bunch of electricals, cables, and stuff um, to signify, you know, the importance of connection. Uh, and sometimes this is how our relationships look, all jumbled up and all messed up, right? Uh, we have so many connections all over. I don't know about you, but you know, when you grow your, your home, um, you end up plugging everything like somewhere by the TV there, right? And if you've been in that house long enough, that place is a disaster area waiting to strike, eh? Because there are so many things plugged in, right? And because there are so many things plugged in, you are even afraid if something goes wrong there, you don't even know where to start. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's even difficult just to unplug your, your, your charger. You know what I mean, eh? Because everything's so tangled and, too, you know, and, 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 and sometimes it's hazardous to, to remove all those cables. So what we tend to do is we just tend to cover it up. What we tend to do is just what? Cover it up. And that's what we do with our relationships. We come out of one relationship, and what do we do? Cover it up. We come out of a bad area, what do we do? Cover it up. Today we want to uncover. 
uncover those things. We want to uncover the things which you are hiding. You know, you know that thing where you remove a cabinet behind and you find that no one has swept there. In fact, that's where they've been sweeping the dead, there. Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? Today we want to clean that area. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to uncover it. Someone you can pop there, I'll come and get you. Listen to me. Relationships done God's way will always work. Okay? Relationships done God's way will always work. Okay? Um, when God gives you the right person, they become a soulmate. But when you catch the wrong person, they become a soul type. Okay? <laughs> Should I say it again? When God gives you right, the right person, they become a soulmate. When the enemy gives you the wrong person, they become a soul tie. And let me tell you something. It's much easier to plug in than to unplug. It's a lot easier to connect than to disconnect. And this is why we have to deal. I don't know this culture and the time that we're in. This generation is like, you know, I, we just want to get to know each other. How can we marry before you, you know each other? You will know Jesus. You will know, right? And so it's a lot easier to connect than to disconnect. And what we want to do is have the right things. Now, when we talk about soul ties, now listen, I'm not just talking about, about just relationships that are of the opposite sex, but I think that there's a room even for friends and family to become hindrances to the right relationships. And I'll explain a lot more. I, I, I don't have, a, I've never taught on this subject before. I, and I have to say that I'm doing this with fear and trembling. And I felt that the Lord wanted me to do this. I don't do things because they're popular, but I do things because I felt the Lord wanted me to talk about this. And I left the home and I told my wife, I said, pray for me, sweetheart, because I'm going into uncharted territory. But I know the effects and the importance of cutting some time when you enter into the right relationships. Um, let me tell you a story, and just to, to signify all these cables and stuff. Um, so one of the cars that, one of the cars that I have, um, a car of, of ours was not working, right? It, it was starting, but it was not working. And, and it, it kept starting, 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 and then it was kept cutting, okay? And I didn't know what was going on, because it's an electrical car, okay? Thank God for the old school Nissans, you know, uh, Corolla 120, you know, the one that's kick, 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 one start, one kick. But this one was electrical and just bing, 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 bing. You know what I mean? One of those that when you push to start, but what happens when you push and it doesn't start? You don't know what to do, right? You want to cry. So I called the, the, the mechanic and the mechanic was like, this is an electrical problem, right? And he says it's an electrical problem. And what he said is that there was one faulty connection that was hindering the mobility of an entire vehicle. One faulty connection was hindering the mobility of the entire vehicle. Let me tell you something. One faulty or unhealthy connection can hinder your life. It can hinder the progress and the movement in your life. So you have to be careful. Listen to me. Unhealthy connections. Unhealthy connections. This is an important part. This is the first point I want you to write down. Unhealthy connections create ungodly consequences. Unhealthy connections create ungodly consequences. When you have the wrong connection, it creates an ungodly consequence. It affects the condition of the relationship. It affects the condition. See, some connections affect the conditions of your relationship. This is so important. The wrong connection that you develop can hinder even the, the condition of future relationships. It can affect the way you have relationships. Today I pray you write notes. I really pray. Okay? I pray you, you, you get the CD for this one. If you're with me, say amen. amen. And so what we want to do is that in order for the vehicle to move, they had to find the faulty connection and deal with the faulty connection so that the vehicle could move. Some of us don't realize that we're trying to move with faulty connections. Just because the car hasn't broken down yet. Because we don't realize, you know, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Kunle from Nigeria showed me this great illustration. Come, come, Eustatius. He showed this illustration and I loved it. He says, you see, you see, 
Lift up your hand to the right. Just lift it up. Lift up the other hand, that hand. Lift it up straight, right? Do you feel pain? No. You doesn't feel pain, right? Okay. Now, sometimes we think that the absence of pain means that you've made the right decision. But let him hold this hand up long enough. It will be followed by pain. So, some of us think that the right decision is usually justified by the absence of pain. But in due season, the pain will follow. You can feel the pain? Okay, you can put your hand down. Now, now, now consequently, have you ever had an injection? Oh. You've had an injection. What is the first thing you feel with an injection? Pain. Some decisions which are good are preceded by pain. So we are a people that look for painless situations to justify the right relationship. When you could be in the wrong relationship and what the devil does is make sure there's no pain. Initially. Because the pain that you don't feel now will be in areas <laughs> in the future. You may take your seats. So we have to deal with unhealthy connections. Genesis prescribes the way that God says a marriages should be formed. Right? And it's based on three things. Leave, cleave, become one. So I want to talk from a, 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 a pure perspective of how we ought to deal with the wrong connections. Look at your neighbor and say, deal with the connections. Deal. Come and look at them one more time and say, deal with the connections. Because what we want is healthier marriages. What we want is healthier relationships. What we want is healthier families. And we have to deal with this. The first thing the Bible tells us to do from Genesis chapter 2 is leave. I don't know what further word you want. But there are some people you just need to There are some situations you just need to leave. Oh Lord, give me a word. Here it is. Leave. He's hurting me. Leave. He's cheating on me. Now I'm talking to the singles there. Because the marriage, that's a bit more complicated. <laughs> Jesus will be like, wait a minute now. What God has put together. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh huh. However, let me prefix this. Let me prefix this and qualify this because I feel that in the culture we are in, this has given infidelity justification in the church. That is ungodly. I don't believe in divorce. But if there's need, separation might be healthy. Okay. Simphona. <laughs> separation. If there is need, let me also qualify this. If your life is in jeopardy, leave. Why would God put you in harm's way? That's for another day. But, but listen, there's some things you need to leave. Let me bring it back to soul ties, right? In the area that I want to talk about, okay? Listen to this, okay? You cannot truly love until you leave some things behind. You cannot truly love until you leave some things behind. Listen to me. Relationships work on a principle of exclusivity. Relationships do not function on sharing, they function on exclusivity. So, <laughs> that amen was powerful. 
so, so, so watch this. You cannot be in this relationship and this relationship at the same time. We, I grew up in the 90s. There was a rap song where they were like, I'm in the mix, I'm in love with two. No. <laughs> and I don't want to let none of them go. Jesus says, let somebody go. <laughs> That's real facts. You cannot truly love until you leave some things behind. Now, here's what I'm talking about. You see, leaving is not a function of, of position. It's a function of access. Let me explain. Okay? God just doesn't want you to leave a place physically, but he wants you to leave in the sense that people no longer have access to you. The Bible says, leave your mother and father's home. Now, what that's talking about is leave what is familiar to you. There has to be a change where what is familiar no longer has access to you. Many of us change scenes, but we don't change the story. So wherever we go, the same story plays. And what ends up happening is the same familiar scenario happens. Can I preach to you? Many times it's the familiar that messes up your future. That's why they call familiar spirits. Familiar, they know you. And usually the people who mess with your relationships are people who know you. And when I look at this scripture, what it's telling is that a man must leave his father and mother's home is because sometimes the people that can mess up your marriage is the people that know you. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Let me tell you something. When you get married, there has to be a difference in access. When I lived under my mother's room or house, she could walk into my room anytime. When I got married, she can't enter some rooms. Some of us take everyone. This is real stuff. Now, for those of you who are single, uh -uh. if you live in your mother's room, she can in the house, she can walk into any room. At any time. That's why they're called your parents. Because they pay. <laughs> Stick right there. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? Now, what I'm talking about here is the fact is that until you leave some people behind, listen, the value of relationships is exclusivity. Okay? Have you ever seen someone when they start dating, they become expensive? That's how relationships function. You can't say, you know, you found me with the guys, you know, so therefore I'm with the guys. Are you crazy? Why did you get in a relationship? Just know when you enter the relationship, some things come to an end. And the woman doesn't have to say anything. She just said, no, it's okay, you can go. <laughs> go. You yourself who have wisdom <laughs> and revelation <laughs> that not every yes is amen. Yes. Are you understanding? Same thing with good ladies. Don't say you're me like this. Why did you get in a relationship? <laughs> there has to be exclusivity. And what people end up doing is they get into relationships and try to carry everything. It says leave. Some things must be left behind. Because what ends up happening is that we carry devices into our relationships. We carry experiences of the past, familiar things into our relationships. Can I talk to you for a second? So one time I'm in the office and my, my laptop breaks down and the IT guy is in Lusaka and I'm here in Dola. And he says, are you in the network? I says, yes, I'm connected to the network. He says, no problem, switch on your remote solution. I said, I switched it on, right? And then he says, has something appeared on your screen? Yes. What is it saying? It says, give permission to so-and-so to take control over your computer. 
<laughs> and I said, yes. Once I gave permission, he was able to access my computer without being in the same room as me. That is what happens when you take old things into new relationships. They are able to control this relationship without even being in the same place as you. That's what happens when you take your ex into your relationship. Your ex into your marriage. Can I preach this thing like I feel it? The person is able to control you without them even being there. Some of you have broken up, but you are still being controlled. A person can text you at any time. A person can call you at any time. When you are married, you need to have boundaries. Some people should not be able to call you at other times. After 20 hours, speak tomorrow. Jesus is for everybody. May he cover you. I'll talk to you at 08. Can I preach this thing? <laughs> Texting at 01. Who are you talking to? These are devices that we carry into our marriage, into relationships. I need to talk about this. These are devices. Somebody can control you. Some of us, it's old experiences. The pain of the past is still in your mind. And a person controls you without even being there. Some of you take your pictures on Instagram thinking that this person is scrolling through. They're not looking at you. <laughs> Get over it. Move on. Today God will help me. Let me tell you this fundamental principle. Every attack requires access. There's always permission Granted. Nobody attacks you without your permission. Nobody attacks you without your permission. You see it and you begin to think about it. When I learned this principle, I realized even, even, even um, adultery, affairs, affairs require access. It always requires something simple. A text that you condone. A visit that you condone? I'm talking to you. Somebody just showing up at your gate? Even the post office closes. Look at your neighbor and say, cut off access. Cut off access. Cut off access. Cut off access. You cannot truly love until you leave some things behind. That's why some of us enter into relationships but carry everything with us. We carry it. This is important. Some of us carry what we saw in our family home with us. We, can't, we take it with us. That's why the Bible says leave your father. To say don't make that. Look, if, it's, if it was a standard, praise God for it. Right? But there has to be separation. There has to be separation. Some of us, we just carry, you know, we've got, you know, uh, close relations and it's great. Listen, this is so important. Right? We're close with our families. I've seen marriages suffer because of overbearing families. It's my family. No, they need to know. I love you, but hey. Hey, but don't disrespect. Always honor. Always honor. Always honor. But there has to be a severance. There has to be a severance. There has to be a disconnection. Do you know that when a baby is born, 
it is born with an umbilical cord. But when that baby is due, if that cord stays connected, oh my goodness, what sustained that baby could end up killing it. So some of us leave our parents' homes, but we don't leave. <laughs> hey! Am I preaching this thing? Yes. I, need, I need to hurry up. I know I, I know I spend up time. I spend up time. The next thing is cleave. Tap, tap your neighbor and say cleave. cleave. Come on, look at them one more time. Say cleave. cleave. What does cleave refer to? Cleave refers to embrace. 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 It says embrace your wife. Embrace your wife. This is another thing that we, we, we do. Master, come. Master, you are my, always my guy. You know the truth. Yeah? Bring those two bottles with you. Bring those two bottles with you, okay? Carry them, carry them, okay? And bring your phone. Bring your phone. I want to show you this, okay? Okay? Now, this is his phone. That's water, okay? We always, listen to this point. This is an important point. We give grace, right, to whatever we embrace. Grace is favor, okay? We favor whatever we embrace, okay? It says embrace. He's holding his phone, okay, and two bottles, okay? If I throw this at you, okay, and I throw this at you, even though your hands are full, okay? <laughs> did you see what he did? Did you see what he did? Right? If push comes to shove, you are willing to drop these two bottles of water so that you can catch your phone. That's what happens when you're in a relationship. You see, I know what you value by what you're willing to drop. Uh oh. Uh oh. I know what you value by what you're willing to drop. If I throw the phone at him and he's not willing to catch the phone, he doesn't care about the phone. He cares about the water, right? That's what we do, right? When you are made, listen, relationships function on choice. You have to make a choice. a choice. Brothers and sisters, children of the most high God, if I were to choose between you, all of you, <laughs> all of you, and my wife, I would leave all of you <laughs> wonderfully joyously, <laughs> smilingly. <laughs> because get this, relationships function on the principle of priority. And priorities are shown by what you are willing to drop to catch onto this. What are you refusing to let go of? That shows your priority. What are you refusing to let go of? Do you know what ends up happening when you have, when you don't embrace your partner? Usually we don't embrace our partner, not you, please. <laughs> because there's another choice that we have. And when you have another choice, what ends up happening is you end up comparing. That's where the spirit of comparison creeps into your home. That's where it creeps into your relationship. When you carry your last relationship as the standard for this one, you start looking at them and say, that one used to cook, that one used to clean, that one used to do this. You don't do this anymore. And you don't embrace the uniqueness. You don't embrace the uniqueness of your partner. You end up comparing them. Now that's not just with, with former partners or whatever it is, the way like it's a business, right? <laughs> but it can also be with homes that you've come from. Men are particularly good at this. We come from a home and try to replicate our mother. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, uh. Can I take my time? Uh -uh. This is true. And what ends up happening is you're like, the minute your wife cooks, you're comparing her cooking. That's demonic. That's demonic. It's demonic. That's something I had to learn to do. To say, hey, what she cooks, I will love. I will enjoy. Not say, ah, no. In fact, in fact, now, just call my mommy. My mommy will give you this. Anyway, are you mad? Right? Now, now, before you just say, hey, amen, ladies. Uh, ladies, th this is what you also do. You have a person that loved you and broke your heart. And then what that person did becomes the benchmark for every person that comes into your life. Now they have to live to a standard that they were never meant to live up to. Can I take my time? So, so, so we, we fail to embrace. We have suffered. Ah, come on now. I believe it was the prophet Asher who said that we can't be paying for his mistakes. I believe so. He said that in the book of Revelations. Or Confessions, I don't remember. you see what ends up happening when we try to hold on to too many things and embrace everything you have limited hands you have limited capacity you can only hold on to one thing and listen to that it even says mother and father live embrace That means even if she makes a mistake, you choose her. Even if he makes a mistake, you choose him. Now, please, what I'm saying here is marital. Because I want to say, from here, they just say, you know, mom, I've chosen him. And who you should do is you tell you, do me a favor, man. Get out of here. For real. This is marital. Man, so you can take your seat. Embrace, right? I told you the first thing was leave, right? The second thing was cleave. Are we together? So, and the third thing here is become one. Become one. I need to end this very quickly. You see, when we were kids, we focused relationships more on being together. But marriage doesn't work on being together. It works on being one. Very different. There is a level of intimacy that is not just about being together but it's about being one. Now, let me prefix this by saying, in the kingdom of God, there are principles. Notice I said God. When I say God, it's serious. Okay? In the kingdom of God, there are principles. And do you know that in the kingdom, you, a marriage was not recognized by a ceremony? A marriage was not recognized by a ceremony. A marriage was recognized by intercourse. Because there was, the person was supposed to be a virgin, a person of purity. And when there was blood, in the eyes of the spirit, a covenant was made. Because marriage is not about being together. It's about being one. 
Have you noticed how married people begin to look alike? Yes. Ever ask yourself why? People come up to me and my wife like, you guys look alike. I'm like, fool, that's my wife. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? I don't know why, but I believe that this principle is very true, that the two become one flesh. Some of you look like so many people. You developed an attitude you don't know where it came from because you became one with somebody do you wonder why suddenly when you met this person you never used to gallivant and go all over the place but after this person you were everywhere like speedy gonzalez you know why because you became one with somebody this is a very important principle. Young people, this is not about attraction. This is about destiny. There's a spirit of lust that has crept into our society where we, we think that every attraction must end in intercourse. Are you crazy? That was God's idea. But it was reserved for marriage. It was reserved for marriage. It was reserved for the home. It, listen, it was God's idea. Why is this important? Guys, do you know that there are some levels of knowledge you should not get into? I hear people saying all this, that I want to know you. Oh! <laughs> knowledge is not just physical. Do you know that there are three dimensions of God? First, you meet God the Father. Then you embrace God the Son. And then you encounter God the Holy Spirit. Just like you, there are three dimensions to you. There is your body, there is your soul, and there is your spirit. So being one is not just physical. It has an emotional impact, which is your soul, and it has a spiritual consequence. So don't get with somebody who you don't want to be attached with emotionally. He has anger issues. Stay away. She crazy. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away from these things. Because relationships thrive not when we are together, but when we are one. Relationships thrive not only when we are together. Relationships thrive not just when we are together, but when you are one. Could this be why you can be in a marriage physically, but be with somebody else emotionally? You could be with somebody else emotionally. And let me tell you something. Emotional cheating. Is worse. It's worse. Now we're just talking. It's emotional. There was an emotion to it. Let me can I can I take this step a step further? Sometimes there are also friendships that become a bit close. Uh oh. Mickey, 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 can I tell you the truth? Me, 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 I don't believe in opposite sex besties. Takwa, Takwa, 
Ave. Somebody has feelings. They have just not declared. And bestie. <laughs> okay. Hey, <laughs> Nada. Nothing, my best friend. Rubbish. <laughs> Somehow he just fell in love with me. I wonder why. I wonder why. <laughs> he didn't just fall in love. You open the flag. <laughs> Are you with me? That's how we create soul ties by not putting up boundaries. This is not just about sex, right? Because a lot of people just think that soul ties are just, you know, somebody you had sex. No! Some of you still remember that girl in grade two. <laughs> Even searching for her on Facebook. What's her name? Molenga. Shame on you. Anybody that... Now what happens is that that person creates an emotional connection that is deeper than your spouse. That is ungodly. And as long as that remains, it will rival the health of your relationship or your marriage. Are we together? People who break up and want to be best friends with your exes. Rubbish. It's over. You are not the counselor. The Holy Spirit is the counselor. We want closure. Closure of what? You are not meant to mend that heart. Leave it. You are the heartbreaker. Move on. Can I deliver people? Don't get married and then still be friends. With excess. For what? Why? Who? Your wife must be your best friend. They, you are all acquaintances. My wife is my friend. We are all three, are just acquaintances. <laughs> I say that proudly. Amen. I say that proudly. It's bad. People always like, you know, say you're not the same. Yes, I'm not the same. <laughs> I'm married. I'm kind of busy. Yeah. Let's end this year. <laughs> because every time we talk of soul ties, we always make it this like eerie thing, you know? But we don't realize that anybody who carries, you need to check yourself. Is there somebody, if you're in a relationship, is there somebody that you are thinking about that isn't your partner? Or even if you're not in a relationship, is there somebody <laughs> you are thinking about? It's a tie. Because that's why people end up getting uh, the right person comes in front of them, but they're still envisioning. This is not just physical, but it is emotional, it is spiritual. Three levels that God wants us to deal with. Number one, leave. Leave the familiar behind. This is something that I have to do as well. I preach about this, but I'm talking to myself. There's nothing that no me, I'm holy. 
I'm the man of God. Hey, where? Hey, where? Of a sexuality, there's no man of God. There's nothing. Joseph said the pew, short. You understand? Joseph, who saw Jesus, I mean, saw God, visions, dreams, eh? Revelation. When he saw Potiphar's wife, he said, Squalic. He never said, That says the Lord. He never said, I bind. Can I talk about this thing? Because people do this in church and, 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 and have bad things. This church is a hospital. And some people are recovering from medication. Some take a lot longer than others. So don't just think that because they are here. They are right. Stand to your feet. need for I know usually when people have these kind of things there's always you know like an altar call like you know pray for you pray for that I think that deliverance is when your mind is set free I feel that that's what it is Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free so the greatest form of deliverance is truth greatest form of deliverance is truth. What, what is it that you have heard today that you feel I need to, to, you know, to deal with it? Are there some things you need to leave behind? Do you need to embrace your partner? You know, embrace godly. Okay, gotta qualify these things. Okay. Is there some knowledge that people you or people you have that you need to stop having? And there's some connections you need to sever. These are real, real issues. And let me tell you something. The devil is a mastermind. Mastermind. The Bible says that there's a book, I think it's the book of Proverbs chapter 7, where it says that there was a man who was sitting on, an, on a ledge looking down. And he saw a young man, brash, of no reason, right? And he saw a harlot in the road, right? Pacing up and down, waiting for this young man who had no reason, who had no sense. You see, many of us just think that everyone that's in our way is part of our destiny. Not everyone planted in your path is in your purpose. Some people are there for your destruction. And I know this from experience. The minute you're getting serious in a relationship, the old people appear. And they always appear after a fight. And you're like, this is a sign. Fool! <laughs> Ain't no sign. Let's stop carrying the familiar into our future. Let's stop reenacting what we've gone through. Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today. Asking that you purify our hearts. 